As we all bow our heads and pray. Our Heavenly Father, I come to you today and uh, asking for prayers for the city, for the choices that they make, and uh, for our mayor and our mayor pro team and all the council people that we have and our clerk and all of our first responders, Lord God. We need to ask for protection for them in our police department and our fire department as the things are going in our cities that are unbelievable, that everything gets better. It has to get better. And I thank you for all the things that the city workers do to keep the city rolling. And uh, and we need all that stuff. And we ask uh, that we keep the people that's over in our service, uh, the ones that serve and the ones that have served, remember them, that they're doing it for us, that this, this nation here counts. And we need to bring this nation back so we don't have all this in between stuff and say so about this and say so about other things and we thank you in the lord jesus christ that it'll get a lot better and the city will prosper from all these things that they're doing right now and we thank you in jesus name amen Uh, Councilman Blatter. Here. Councilman Schlapp. Present. Councilman Valeria. Here. Councilwoman Sykes. Here. Councilman Lloyd. Here. Pro Tem Ronald. Here. And Mayor McLeod. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. We have a motion uh, for approval of the agenda. Motion, Mayor. Motion by Mr. I'll Lloyd. Second. second by Mr. Valerius. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. I have a motion to approve the minutes. Motion, Mayor. Motion by Mr. Schlack. Second, second by Mr. Lolly. Any uh, discussion or corrections? If not, uh, I have vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, before we proceed, I'm wondering if Chase Pruitt happens to be here. Hmm. Chase, if you want to come up, please. Um, I started tonight's meeting with a gavel and a block, which has not existed at City Hall, and um, which now resides here because of Mr. Pruitt, who um, is a graduate of Allen Park High School, class of 2020, and um, had to track him down. Uh, <laughs> but he made this uh, not too long after we were all elected, and. Um, I wanted to express my appreciation personally to him, and I wanted all the council members um, to know who he was and thank him very much. And as I told him, uh, this is going to remain here for everyone who succeeds me because there's never been one here, and I think um, that, that there should be one that is, resides with City Hall. So thank you very much. Stand up around. And um, I'm glad you could make it. Yep. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It started with Mr. G. He uh, asked if I would make the gavel. My uncle was supposed to be up here. He was Bob Stites. Mm. And uh, he, the plan was to actually me to come give it to you, but because of COVID struck, I could never come and actually finish it. So I got all the way down to the end, and so Mr. G wrapped it up for me, and then it got handed to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chase. Thank you. <clears throat> And now we'll go on to organizational business. He has his own business. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I always have to follow after something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some uh, brief updates of what's, uh, what we got going on here in the city. Um, Allen Road at the Course Creek is still closed, but we're hearing some rumblings that it may open at the end of this week. I'll believe that when I see it, and uh, as you all will as well. Um, I did go by there yesterday. It looks like it is ready to be open. Um, I was ready to move the barricades around and open it myself, but I figured that might be illegal and didn't want to test those waters there. So, uh, But hopefully by the end of this week uh, is what we've been hearing. Uh, the Belmont Avenue Water Main Replacement Project from Fox's Champagne is now in the uh, 
concrete uh, uh, pavement and restoration portion uh, of that project. Their estimated time to finish that all up is about another two or three weeks, and they'll be finally uh, finished with that. I know it's been a long project, but uh, the benefit is uh, no more uh, three o'clock in the morning. Uh, uh, somebody knocking on your door to tell you there's no water or, or getting up in the morning for, for a shower, there's no water. Um, so that'll be wrapped up here shortly. Uh, DPS and uh, Parks and Recreation, uh, we were able to meet with Ailes Asphalt uh, last week. Uh, we were able to get some dates out of uh, the guys. We have a number of projects. And it looks like they're going to be starting sometime around the 1st of June, maybe even a little bit sooner. And they should be all wrapped up by the middle, of, uh, by the end of June, 1st of July. And um, uh, that'll be uh, what we have. We've got alleyways, we've got Beatrice, uh, we've got Cunningham Park. Um, we have the roadway coming out of the old uh, DPS facility. I think there was a total of six projects they had total. I think they were counting the alleys as, uh, as two. So um, be happy to get those projects underway and, and completed as well. Uh, the Allen Park Fire Department is offering in-home COVID-19 vaccinations. Uh, they are going to be using the one-dose Johnson & Johnson uh, shot. And those uh, ho for homebound Allen Park residents uh, through May 27th. Um, we have the notification on the Facebook page. I know it's on the fire page. I know it's on the uh, website. Um, if anybody wants to get that number, call, and they'll schedule. I think they're doing them between 9 and 12 and 1 and 4. One and, four. and it's Monday through Thursday on that. So uh, very nice that we can be able to get into the houses of those residents and, and take care of those people. Um, I'm, I'm going to go up. How many, you know, how many we've done so far? Or? Uh, only five so far. We've only done three days. So. Okay. So plenty of capacity there if we can get the people in there. So. And maybe if, if there's not, not a lot, then maybe that's a good sign that people have gotten vaccinated as well. So we'll, we'll look at it both ways. Uh, Deputy Chief Can has worked with the Allen Park Public Schools to acquire an old school bus that will be used for fire training. Um, I'm not too sure what that fire training is going to involve. I'm a little worried, but uh, um, something about fire and gas tank. I think he is taking the gas tank out, so there will be no gas tank in there. So that, that was a good sign I was well happy about. I think the insurance company was really happy about that too. Um, the police department, they've been working on the conversion of the new computer system. This will allow them to be able to be linked with the other downriver communities. Um, it's the old sink system, which was out of the 33rd District Court, which was the south downriver, and the north downriver portion was on a different system. Now they'll be on the same system. Um, hopefully everything's going well. I know Chris was having a little bit of uh, hair pulling out. I know the feeling, so, but once you get everything under control, uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be nice to have that system in place there. For the, uh, the library has been uh, reopened. They opened uh, yesterday uh, morning. They are doing the 30-minute uh, grab-and-goes and the internet uh, computer sessions in 30-minute blocks as well. Due to the social distancing, though, they are limited to five adult computer uh, locations. Uh, but they are still doing the uh, curbside delivery. As I mentioned last time, that has been very popular. I think that's something that's probably going to be sticking around for, for uh, some time to come. So. Uh, we're going to be here closed here at City Hall in the Records Bureau on May 20th. We're going to be doing some staff training. We're going to be closed to the public from 8.30 to 1. So we'll open back up in the afternoon uh, once they're done, done the, the clerk will done with the training. And then uh, finally, uh, this came across late. Uh, I did not have time to put it on the agenda, so it'll be on the agenda for next meeting for road closures. But the Festivities Commission is still is starting to plan the 21 Allen Park uh, Street Fair for Friday, August 6th, and Saturday, August 7th. The hours of both those days are going to be very limited to from previous years. 10 to 7 is the hours. There will be no beer, no wine, no entertainment. And uh, as they try to uh, meet all the COVID-19 uh, mandates and also to uh, em employ some social distancing and so forth. Um, I know that there was a, 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 a quite a bit of a struggle between the, the members. I, I know it was not a unanimous vote. I think there's... Um, I don't think that there's, and it didn't seem like there was any anger or anything like that, but just a uh, difference of opinion on how they should move forward. But I think they're ready to move forward as a whole group, which is good. Um, it's, it's not an easy decision. I know um, you all have sat here and made tough decisions. And imagine here is a, a, a non-elected body trying to do what's best for the community. And either way you go, you're going to get ridiculed. And I, I, I've said this before, 50% of the people here probably think you have done too much and you, you don't need to do any more. And 50% of people think you haven't done enough and you need to keep doing more. And that's the balance net that they're, they're trying to work with. As Joe mentioned, and I don't know, Joe had this uh, had the report early too, so um, <laughs> Joe mentioned uh, some of the other communities, uh, 
our friends in Wyandotte, our friends in Trenton are also proceeding and uh, looking at uh, the, the same type of procedures with no inter with no entertainment or no <clears throat> no beverages and so forth and uh, and everything I guess even in that portion is still really fluid. If if, if some changes come in that that uh, change this, then there'll be all bets are off at that point. I think the biggest concern I know for a couple of the members was uh, locking in for con for uh, contracts with people and then not being able to fulfill those. So hopefully this is a, a positive sign. And I know uh, Parks and Rec and DDA are both working on either music in the streets, they're working on music in the parks. And uh, so trying to get back to some sort of normalcy and uh, hopefully not have 2021 be anything like 2020 was. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Very good, Mark. On the report. If not, thank you very much. And can I have a motion to accept and file? Motion. Motion by Councilwoman Seit. Second. Second by Councilman Valerius. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Has passed. I'm going to be on vacation next week, is why he announced that last time. I have left uh, Chief LaFond. In charge of the department at meeting. I am hoping, <laughs> Dole with for everybody. Time is what I understand. I'm, I'm hoping maybe he'll, he'll reciprocate by allowing me to be the chief for a day or something like that too. So, I'm, where are you going? Uh, we're going to go to uh, Roanoke, uh, Virginia, the hotspot oh. of the uh, Virginia, apparently. Beautiful. <laughs> so the question is: Is that a reward or a punishment? Uh, <laughs> the oh, to, work, to, be, to do the uh, meeting? Uh, oh, definitely. Uh, that's, a, that's a reward. Everybody good? Good. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay. And now we come to the public comment segment of tonight's meeting. Anyone who is in attendance would like to come up and make comment, please feel free to do so. You are limited to four minutes, and all we ask is that you provide your name and the street on which you live. We do not want the exact address, so we are open for public comment. Hello. 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 Um, McLean Avenue? Mm -hmm. McLean Avenue. So is that, and my, right. and my name is Luke. Luke? Luke, Luke Wenzel. Hi, my name is Luke Wenzel, and first I would like to thank this Honorable Mayor and City Council for giving me this opportunity to speak today. I'm here today to represent the youth of Allen Park. There is a large community of BMX bikers, people that ride scooters, inline skaters, and skateboarders in our city. We love learning new skills and meeting up to share new ideas and show each other tricks. The problem is that we do not have a proper place to do these and meet up in practice. We often ride through downtown Allen Park, go to Cabrini in the public schools, Park Avenue, and at the clock tower down Allen Road. The pro and, uh, some of the, sometimes the residents do not like when we do this and they call the police. We are just trying to get out and learn something new and hang out with our friends. I'm here today representing a large group of future voters who are the youths and teens of Allen Park, and I also represent some adults who and would like to propose in Allen Park City Skate Park. This will be a great asset to our wonderful city. It would attract new families and new residents to our city while giving us a place to hang out and support each other. A skate park would not be limited to only skateboarders. It will be utilized by kids and adults who skate, scooter, bike, and rollerblade. Have you ever been to the Riverside City Skate Park in Detroit that was funded by the Tony Hawk? What you would see are groups of kids and adults supporting each other and being respectful waiting for their turns and helping each other out. If I fall, someone will grab my board and help me up. If I'm struggling with a trick, someone will offer advice. The skate culture and community is one of the greatest groups I've been a part of and, and very nice to be. It's pretty nice to think that people could bond like this just by pushing wood around with wheels. Most surrounding cities have skate parks such as Melvindale, Detroit, Westland, and Woodhaven. And it's a burden to get there by ourselves. Having one in our own city would be much easier to get and less stressful for our parents if there is a skate park here. I believe that this would also help our city's economy by helping out local businesses and, and attracting visitors to our city with, and, new, and future residents with kids and teens. 
I myself was not very good at sports, but I found that skating was a great hobby and that would allow me to exercise and go out and meet new people. My friend of mine, Jay, has recently posted on the Alan Parker Facebook page this question. We should have a skate park here. Who else agrees? And my friend received a lot of, a lot of positive feedback from the local residents. Questions I have are is, how do I get the momentum going on this? Do we need a petition? Does our city have funding for this? If not, I have a few ideas for funding, such as fundraising, business sponsorships, grants, and perhaps starting a charity. My skate park vision and design would accommodate all skill levels from beginners to pro. Skate park builders would take many things under consideration, such as floodplains, drainage, lighting, benches, and much more. I found that the average skate park can cost around $45 per square foot. We have some great locations in Allen Park that I think would work, such as Champaign Park, Millward Park, and Pretty Family Park. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Thank you. That's a great idea. Yeah. And we probably need one. Is there anyone else who would like to come up during public comment? If not, we'll close public comment and move on with the agenda. Next, we have the consent agenda, which consists of purchasing actions, claims and accounts, the payroll report, finance actions, which are the finance overview, budget to actual report, balance sheet, <coughs> excuse me, and cash flow, and licenses and permits. We have a parade permit for the Allen Park High School Senior Send-Off on May 12th, and a street closure for the Allen Park DDA Annual Car Show on August 25th. I, I have a motion. I'll have to take, I'll get the motion. Motion by second. Mr. Lally, second by Mr. Schlack, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. That has passed. We move on to resolutions. First resolution is to adopt the fiscal year 2021-2022 budget. I have a motion. Motion. Oh. Motion by Councilwoman Syke. Second. Second by Councilman Lloyd, do we have any questions or discussion regarding the fiscal year budget? Hearing none, call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Resolution two. Resolution for the state of Michigan to recognize the Allen Park Firefighters Charities for a charitable gaming license. May I have a motion? I may have a motion. Motion by Mr. Lally. Second by Mr. Valerius. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Resolution three. Resolution to consider waiving the city bid process as there is no economic benefit to bid the video and sound upgrade and award a contract to advance lighting and sound for the upgrade to the council chamber and workstation in the IT room, video and sound, conference room video and sound, installation labor and system programming in the amount of approximately $57,000. Funds to come from the cable slash IT fund. May I have a motion? Motion, Mayor. Motion by Mr. Schlack. Second. Second by Mr. Lloyd. Questions or comments? I, I just want, um, through my conversations with Mr. Gross, is my understanding that uh, there's really only one company around that is doing this kind of job that we're looking for? Is that my understanding? Yeah, yeah there, there's, there's a second company, but they don't come with high credentials. Um, mm -hmm. I did some research on the uh, Woodhaven, and that's sorry, I, thought, I, I used uh, this company, um, Advanced Lighting and Sound, in, when I was in Woodhaven. Um, we've used them here in Allen Park for a number of things for a number of years. Uh, there is a company that was a bidder in the uh, Windat bid, along with Advanced Lighting, um, and Windat went back and awarded to Advanced Lighting, even though they were the second bid because of issues that they've had previous times with that other contractor. So $57,000 for all that work? Yeah, so that'll be new cameras in here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's three cameras in the back, one camera at the front, so you can get a, a view here. They are high def uh, again. 
Um, there'll be a camera, and it'll be an uh, upgrade to sound because they've had some, we've had some sound issues on the recordings um, from here, so they'll be able to reduce some sound. In the conference room, there'll be one camera, and there'll be sound in there, and then it also, up, it, uh, the, a lot of the equipment is being is upgraded in the um, back IT room with the, um, with the uh, TriCaster. Um, and that gives you a lot of ability. Uh, one of the things I was interested in, and I'd like to probably talk with uh, Pat Hawkins and Rob Fulton, um, and just talking to my son, that TriCaster has a lot of ability, and maybe there's an opportunity to maybe even do something at the uh, ice arena for hockey games and stuff like that. And maybe the opportunity to work with the schools on, on something like that. That would be future. That is not part of that, but it is that the capacity that this something that has the ability has. to do. Yeah, when I when I showed it to to my son, who's uh, at Adrian College, he was pretty impressed with the list of equipment here. He's, you know, maybe better than what Adrian College has. And that and that TriCaster is what hooks us up to like the public broadcasting the the channel, right? Yeah, that's part of that process. I, I don't want to get detailed because you're I'm, I'm way out on the limb already. Get your son up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you <wouldn't> <laughs> Um, I was a little worried that the, we purchased a electronics system back, uh, I think it was probably the previous council, uh, back in uh, December of, I think, uh, 17, and, uh, or uh, December of 18. And I was worried, you know, worried that that was going to be uh, you know, out, but that is actually part of this whole process. It'll, it'll be incorporated in, so we, we don't lose that piece of equipment. Other than that, everything else back there is uh, pretty ancient, you know, 16 to 18 years old. Technology-wise, it is I, dinosaur. The ancient, dinosaur comes. Yeah, it's it's old. I'm definitely excited for this. I hope this answers a lot of the concerns citizens have and help us be more transparent, especially when that we've heard. I think every one of us have, have heard of audio-visual issues they have when they try to watch the meeting. Yeah, I think it gives us some you know some additional opportunities as well that we can kind of expand into. I'm excited to hear about more of those as they we learn more about what we can do. Advanced lightning and sound. Uh, where they where are they located? Where where they come from? Yeah, hold on one second. I believe they are out of uh, Troy. Hmm. Out of Troy. Does that include any kind of a, a maintenance agreement? Uh, this uh, I do not believe so. I think it just was a setup. Um, I will have to follow up on that. I don't uh, know on that. Um, when I talked to a friend of mine who's in Tennessee, who happened to actually work for the other company at one point in time, uh, he gave a couple of tips to, to find out about extra, make sure there's a, all the trainings included there in extra training if, if necessary as well. So we'll follow back up on that as well. Yeah, because I'd hate to see, you know, a year in and something break and we're stuck. Oh, that project. Uh, there is a warranty, correct? Warranty? I would assume that we're getting some type of warranty on the equipment. I have those two noted. Hmm? I have those two noted. Okay. Okay. Usually, uh, the money, 57, you think it's appropriate? I mean, yeah. So again, I, I, I contacted I'm a friend. Just asking, yeah, I contacted the friend that used to work for the other company, and he he looked it all over as well. Um, he's not in. He's not any bearing on this. Doesn't benefit from anything, and he thought everything looked pretty good. Um, we the initial price you might notice was a little bit higher, but we took out the TV. Uh, there's no need for the TV. We got one here. If we want to do something with that, we'll just use the existing one we have. And that was about a seventeen hundred and fifty dollars savings. Amanda was cheering at that point. <laughs> I, think, I think she'd like to scrutinize it even more if, if possible. So we are we, we all going to have computers that. here? Are we all going to have personal computers up here? Not, not, not on this for that price. Yeah, not for this. Not for this. Now they will leave your microphones. They actually said the microphones we have are probably one of the top uh, microphones around. It's just a matter of everybody trying to make sure you use it the proper way, which is to talk directly into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just ask. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> no more. If not, uh, call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. Resolution 4. Who made the motion, Mr. Floyd? Uh, that was Mr. Schlack and Mr. Floyd. Resolution 4. 
is to consider waiving the city bid process as there is no economic benefit to bid the DPS facility furniture and approve a contract with Marks Moda Incorporated to purchase Herman Miller office furnishings and installation services for the related DPS facility design through the use of the Omnia Partners Public Sector Cooperative Purchase Arrangement in the amount of $34,629.87. I'll make a motion, motion there. Thank you. Mr. Lally. Supported by Mr. Valerius. Questions and comments? I didn't have a question. When's, uh, by the, when we place it, the bid in, I order it, what is the estimated time frame that it's going to take to get here? We're, we're being told somewhere between six to eight weeks, maybe a little bit longer. So maybe up to 10 weeks. Okay. Which is almost typical if you purchase furniture from anywhere, it, just for your house, it's, it's in the three to four month range. So there's a little bit of a lag time on that. Um, this, this will be the office furniture. Um, there, we're getting a quote now for the conference uh, training center uh, area. We don't have that. That is not included in here. Um, hmm. The money for this uh, project here would be from the fiscal year 22 budget um, that you just approved earlier. And it is uh, a portion in the water department, portion in the, um, in the general fund DPS portion of the budget. I got one question. I, I, I made the motion, by the way. But what I want to know is, uh, when you bid this building at a DPS, doesn't the furniture came along with it or no? I, I wish it did, but that does not. That doesn't. That, that's this is yeah, that's over left and the above. Yeah, right? that's left for the uh, for the um, okay. for the owner. I just wanted to know. Yeah, and what we, we did here, we we used Mark's Moda here as well. Um, quality furniture, uh, you know, Herman Miller, and uh, it's one probably one of the better brands. I believe the Herman Miller's yeah. still located out of Grand Rapids, Holland area. Uh, Michigan Company at uh, one point in time. I don't know if they still are or not. Hmm. Was there? Yeah. Charles can speak on that. Didn't they have an exhibit at one time at the museum? Yeah. I do have another <laughs> question. I remember checking have that out. Have you tried to get a price from Stillcase Furniture? Stillcase Office Furniture? So what I end up doing, uh, so the, the pricing on this here is actually through the uh, the consortium, which is right. not, not, not unusual. We've used a lot of these. In fact, I, I kind of chuckled to myself when I looked down and, and went back in to look at the pricing for the floor tile, the, for the safety tile at the uh, uh, park, uh, for Kennedy Park, it's actually using the same bid process because uh, Wayne County uses them uh, for the airport authority. That's why I, I must quote some information the airport authority approved through the same contract. Um, we, we had a, uh, a, a vendor that had contacted Mayor McLeod. Um, so I contacted her and I asked her to bid on I tried to keep it very simple. I went with the file room and the conference room. There was only a, a handful of pieces. It wasn't getting into wire chases and uh, wire whips and anything like that. It was going to be, it's pretty basic. And when I did that, uh, their price came in somewhere between 31 to $3,700 higher. And it was the higher number was because of the type of chair they were proposing. Um, now they also used a consortium bid. So most of the companies all use some sort of consortium bid and you're just going for whatever, uh, the furniture quality you're looking for. She was uh, using a uh, Hayworth, which I believe is also a high, uh, a top line uh, quality uh, piece of furniture that's going to last. I think that's the biggest thing for what we have here is it's got to last for years to come. Um, I, I don't want to, I'm on the record here, I can't say, you know, Mr. Katie would probably would have preferred like solder furniture, but uh, we, want to, <laughs> we want something that's going to last. <laughs> Go yeah, for the Ikeas, absolutely, thank you. And that, but the uh, this is a, a quality furniture that's the same type of furniture we do have here in uh, in the um, uh, clerical portion, um, and uh, but this will be in the clerical portion and in the offices. So I think it's a rugged enough that it's going to last for years to come. Sounds like a very good price. It's okay with me. It is a. It, in my opinion, it's a good price. When I redid West Bloomfield, I had to take a. Yeah. There's like different tiers of furniture and Steelcase and Herman Miller are at the top and then, then below them was Han and all, all we could afford was Han and I was getting very similar. Hmm. So well, um, the reason I asked for Steelcase, all due respect to you, Mark, 
He did a good job, no problem. I worked for Stone Days, and, and we did a lot of offices at Ford Motor Company with Stone Days. Yeah, top, top So that's why well. I asked, because yeah. at one time, you know, I used to estimate the jobs for furniture for, for the Ford offices at one time. But the prices went up, of course. And uh, I didn't know any other company. They had other companies, but we only dealt with that because that's what Ford wanted. Built with still gates. That's all. That's the reason I asked. And it sounds like a heck of a good price for all the furniture on those offices and and conference rooms, right? Chairs yep, and all yep, that stuff. The, uh, will be the four workstations, uh, five offices, and the conference room and a file room. Okay. This does not again does not include the lunch room. It does not include the um, the uh, conference uh, uh, work. Um, the presenting room that you guys are going to hear, which, yeah. is about the, which is about the size of this, but right. it'll be a nice oh, that's a big one. Yeah, it's going to be a nice area there. Um, one of the things that we may end up doing in talking to Councilwoman uh, Syke is uh, there is a the one proposal that I gave you with this price is for the wardrobes that go attached to the to the uh, uh, units. Uh, we may scrap those and, and just go with the uh, uh, lateral cabinets as opposed to the upright wardrobe is I kind of agree and we'll, we'll talk to Tom and that I think there's enough uh, closet space in there for the ladies and, and men to hang their uh, jackets and we can uh, save that cost out of here so this if this is probably going to be either high in number will probably be less than that but don't forget to look at putting the electricity nope. at the top on the top uh, mm. and you don't want to see people crawling underneath the thing to plug stuff in no. <laughs> That's, I, I've had that happen. I think everybody has. I, I was under there plugging something in. I didn't go far enough out in the uh, the keyboard rack. Um, when you don't, when you have no hair, it, everything just kind of glides quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Are there any other questions? If not, we have the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Motion is carried. Resolution five, a resolution to approve the Glass Onion Griddle LLC's request for an on-premise Class C liquor license at 6828 Allen Road. We have a motion. Motion. Motion by Mr. Levins. Second, Second by Mr. Valerius. Questions or comments? They're smart. Those people are pretty smart by doing that, right? Yes. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame. Yes, that. they are. Just what we were talking about, right, Joe? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Other questions, comments? Hearing none, I call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion is carried. Now we get to council comments, and tonight, um, Mr. Valerius starts us off. All right, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. And I had to write this down because I wanted to make sure I got everything correct. Luke, <coughs> thank you. I appreciate your, I thought, I'm, I'm going on a teacher standpoint here. And as a high school teacher who's taught speech for 12 plus years, uh, your presentation was extremely well delivered. It's apparent you did your research. Uh, and it's apparent that you are passionate about this for sure. Uh, also, as, a, as someone who uh, used to set up ramps and jump over local neighborhood kids on my BMX bike uh, growing up, uh, I totally understand where you're coming from, for sure. Uh, I would use your words, as you stood up here in front of us, as an example of an effective, well-thought-out, persuasive plea that warrants consideration and further study. Uh, I appreciate uh, you doing this. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to come here. Uh, and I, I thank you for coming here. I really do. Thank you. Uh, and it's been a while. It's been a while. So I, 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 I kind of, uh, at today during one of my breaks, I kind of just put some words together and I'll share them with you. Uh, as one gets older and self reflects the past and present and all they affect visions of how things were and how things might be create a mental image that only you can see. Reflections of youth and of years gone by, what could have been, with no answers as to why. 
The good and the bad make us who we are. The good makes us smile. The bad may leave a scar. We close our eyes each night, let dreams carry us away, awaken to things anew and the dawn of a new day. Cherish everything that you have, as it can vanish oh so fast, and live each day rich in hope, not focused in the past. For our lives are gifts from God that we alone can open, and it is our love and friendship that mend hearts that are broken. And I thank you for everyone's time tonight. Uh, good night, and we'll see everyone in two weeks. I yield. I want to thank everyone for attending. I'll be quick. I don't really have a ton to say. I want to congratulate Allen Park Schools for passing that bond. I think that's uh, very good for the citizens that voted for that. I was in favor of that bond. Um, also, I want to thank Mr. Chase again for the gavel. I, it's wonderful craftsmanship to see. And I saw you had Milwaukee on there, so I imagine you're still building things and maybe uh, I imagine a passion of yours. I also want to thank Luke that took a lot of bravery to come up here and discuss and tell us about your vision for what you'd like to see in Allen Park. That's something I don't know a lot about, but I know I did play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater way too many hours to count. Uh, finally, I just want to encourage residents to get out and get vaccinated as soon as you can. I think as soon as residents do that, the sooner we can really get back to normal and do things that we all love and enjoy. So with that being said, thank you very much, and I'll see everyone in two weeks. Chase. Thank you, Gary. Charles. Huh? All right. Um, so many notes to take. Okay. Um, first off, uh, uh, thank you, Luke, for coming up and speaking. Like I said uh, a couple weeks ago. I encourage all residents to come up here and speak to us. It's better to come up here than on social media because we all not see everything on social media and not in certain groups and all that stuff. So please, I encourage residents to come up here and speak to us, your representatives, so that we know what um, concerns um, that's going on in the city. Um, I had a few um, people who weren't able to come to our meeting. Um, they had gave me notes. Um, again, the sign on so Southfield by Pinecrest. If any updates on when that's gonna get fixed, um, it's again the first thing that people see when they drive into Allen Park and makes a difference. And I get messages, emails on that. Um, the Historical Commission, with their bottle caps, uh, I was just notified that June 1st will be the last day they're going to be collecting the bottle caps. Um, so once that's done, they're done collecting. Um, uh, I, I, it's, I want to thank all the volunteers who helped out at the election polls uh, last Tuesday. Um, it really does mean a lot when volunteers help out in the city. Um, if anyone, and I've gotten messages about um, county roads, state roads, but mostly the county roads, um, if there's an issue, please call 1888 Road Crew and if there's a concern, please call them, and that's the best way. The more people that talk about, uh, for example, Allen Road and E-Course, that section area, um, I know in the past, from experience before being on council, would call about Allen and Wick and then finally get fixed. So um, hopefully uh, the Allen Road bridge at the E-Course Creek will be open permanently. I truly apologize, like, as, I apologize to the first responders of not getting informed about in Melvindale and Oakwood when they closed that down because if it was a, if there was an accident or anything, life thing, they couldn't get down 
on Oakwood. Um, yeah, I know that's a county road and stuff, but it's just, it, I, I wish that there's better communication on higher ends with uh, Wayne County and, up and all that. Um, if uh, anyone is interested, uh, I did, uh, we got an email from Mayor about um, Ferndale. Um, June 1st, they are going to do a, a Pride flag um, raise on June 1st. So um, if anyone's interested, in, especially in the LGBTQ community, uh, Ferndale will be doing that. Um, it, it's interesting that, I'm sorry I have so much to say, it's interesting that it's almost with teachers mid or midterm of being on this uh, term um, come June, July, two years, and so much that this council has gone through in the last two years, and um, it, it's just, uh, it's just very interesting and a good learning experience. And I, um, again, always encourage anyone to, and I applaud anyone that steps up to help their community. Um, we just approved a $57,000 of for lights, uh, and or not lights, uh, camera. <laughs> Uh, technology and stuff, and I'm glad that that, that was a need. Uh, the amount of people that have come up for like when they have uh, cable and wow, and they say they can't hear and me personally. Sometimes would have to go the volume all the way past the volume, the let the words because it's so quiet and stuff. So it, I hope this all works out. Um, last week we were discussing about a marquee sign in front of our permanent city hall, and possibly cost $65,000, I, I just, whether it happens next year, six years, 10 years, I personally believe it is a need because right now we could be advertising before we could have been advertising about, the, please make sure you vote, please get your vaccine, please, uh, the street fair and all these events in this, uh, a marquee sign, um, a lit, lit up one, but that's just my two cents on that, where I still believe that with better communication, I think we should need one in the city hall at some point. Um, um, May is a um, um, mental health awareness month, and as your representative, friend, neighbor, I'm always here to listen, day and night. If you ever need someone to talk to, I am here. I respect everyone, whether you're a mother, a father, teacher, veteran, anyone. I respect all of you, and you don't know what people are going through in their personal lives, and whether how they look or how, who they are, I just always, the one thing is, my parents always tell me, treat others the way you wanna be treated. And so with that, thank you all for coming out. God bless and have a good night. Thank you, Charles. Tony. You guys can you hear me? I just want to thank everybody for coming here tonight. And, as, and uh, I, one thing for sure, Valerius should be a poet. So I think he should be writing a book. <laughs> he did a good job. Thank you. I can't say all the stuff you can, but you did a good job. I do have a couple uh, announcements. On May uh, 22nd, we're going to have the Memorial Day celebration at the Veterans Memorial in Otter Drive. There will be a honor guard. There will be a, a, a presenting of the colors, which is the flags. 
by the police department, the VFW, the American Legion, and so far. But we are having a, to, uh, some dignitaries come in. Uh, the mayor invited uh, Dingo. Uh, Sa Sam uh, Badoon and uh, Bullock, right? And uh, I don't know, uh, yeah, Tulio, River Riley is going to be coming too. So it's going to be a, a, a nice celebration. So the, the police uh, honor guards are practicing almost every day after hours to make sure they do a good job up there. And I'm pretty sure that Chief is part of it. Isn't that true? Yeah. So they're going to be uh, doing a good job. Another announcement I got to tell you is that we are having the American Legion is having a food drive again on June 25th from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. That's with the gleaners uh, together. So anybody that wants to help, the fire department, the police department, everybody's open, the, the council people, the mayor, everybody. You could uh, come and help out. It's only a couple hours. And uh, hopefully we'll get rid of 500 pounds of food, 40, 40 pound boxes of food. So that's one thing that we're doing. And another, honor guard, uh, another thing we'll be going to be doing, honoring, is the 9-11. I'm going to mention this again until it happens. It's, uh, that's, uh, we're going to dedicate that day to all the first responders, the nurses, the fire department, the police department, hospital workers, anything to do with first responders, we're going to be doing that. American Legion is going to be there. Another owner guard from the police department is going to be there presenting the colors. There will be a national anthem, and there will be a, a fireworks, too while they're doing the national anthem. So anyway, you, uh, you're welcome to come. It'll be across from the uh, Knights of Columbus uh, Hall at the park. It'll be 9-11. We're all working on right now on uh, the details and the program. Once we get that all taken care of, we'll let you know. But it's going to be a, a big celebration for 9-1-1. And thank you very much for coming tonight. God bless and good night. Good Tony. Yes, ma'am. Dan. All right. Well, first, I'm, I'm glad that we're updating the, uh, the sound and the cameras. I know people struggle to hear me at home. So I, I do appreciate that. Um, I, I want to um, echo my comments from my fellow council member, um, Luke. Fantastic job. Also a teacher. Ethos, pathos, logos, head at all, rhetorical devices, well-researched. Well argued. Um, I see that Director Hawkins, as we were talking here, he, he um, walked over to you. And so um, hopefully we, we're already taking the first steps here um, and really commend you. Again, this is how democracy works. You know, um, I, I was not a skater. Um, I lack coordination. OK, <laughs> uh, but th that's that's why we need um, our citizens to come here and, and tell these these things that we need. And I think that you make an excellent point. Um, a skate park. Um, I have a cousin who's in his 40s. He still goes to skate park regularly. You have young kids going there. This is a um, intergenerational place where our community can come together. We can form these bonds. We can strengthen our ties as a community. And I think that this is something that's incredibly important. Um, I anytime we put down a fresh piece of pavement, um, you're guaranteed to see about five uh, BMX bikers doing a manual down the middle of it. That's a guarantee. I promise you. Some of them are my students, and I would I would love I would love to be able to give those uh, individuals a safe place to practice their sport. So um, thank you again. Um, hopefully we can get the works into that um, and, and we can make that a reality. Um, and that's how government's supposed to work. So thank you so much. Um, to uh, Mr. Pruitt, uh, one of my uh, former students, incredibly proud of him. Um, he, uh, it's actually, I just ran into him the other day while we were getting gas. He is still making things. He has his own company. I've got a big handful of cards for you, so I'll hand them out if anybody has any lawn work or general contracting. Um, I have absolute uh, faith in uh, Mr. Pruitt to do that. Um, and Chase, to you, um, I know that your uncle, uh, Councilman Seitz, be incredibly proud of you, of the man that you've become and the work that you've done. Um, and I am incredibly proud of you. I'm incredibly proud to be, be your teacher. So, so thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. 
Um, final note here, uh, just in, um, so a couple things. Um, as a person that still frequently rides school buses, um, thank you to uh, Deputy Chief Can for doing these training activities. Um, I think that this is something that uh, our, our first responders don't necessarily get that opportunity to, to perform these, uh, these, these things, and, and we, we want them to practice it before it is a reality. God forbid that it ever be a reality that they would have to do that. Um, so I appreciate that, um, again, taking that extra step to keep our community safe. So, so thank you very much for, for reaching out and, and making that work. Again, showing these, this intergovernmental connection, okay? The, the schools and the city working together for the betterment of the entire community. So thank you so much. Um, final thanks goes to uh, Chief Egan. Um, in his report, uh, I, I noticed that um, for our recent um, use of force training, invited the uh, Detroit 300, which is a, a, a group of um, individuals from Detroit um, who, who focus on community policing. Um, I, I think that it's incredibly important that we acknowledge that, that everybody has different experiences um, with, with life. And, and policing is one of those things. Um, and I very, very much appreciate Chief Egan taking a proactive approach to this and making sure that we are acknowledging different perspectives from varying communities, from varying individuals. Um, and so that we are taking, again, taking a proactive step to, uh, to serve the citizens of Allen Park and, and really the citizens of the general community because we have three major highways coming through Allen Park. This is a, a major thoroughfare, a lot of people from a lot of different communities. So I, I very much applaud uh, Chief Egan um, for, for taking those proactive steps. Um, and with that, that's all I have. Thank you everybody for coming out, I appreciate it. Pam. Well, I can understand now at, uh, why it's always so hard at the end because everybody's already said everything. But uh, Luke, I remember the first times when I had to come up and speak and the little fire, the little antsiness in your stomach as you're getting up, you did a wonderful job. And um, I remember a long time ago, well, I wouldn't say a long time ago, but it's my daughter's friends talking about a dog park. And now that's a few steps closer to reality. It's going to be over by the DPW, um, the, the new building. So we have faith that, you know, and if it, uh, I've already seen Mr. Hawkins, Hawkins uh, go over and speak to you, and I'm looking forward to maybe even going out and watching you guys when, you get it, when it happens. And Chase, thank you very much for the gavel. It uh, really good workmanship, what I could see from over here. And um, I just, uh, I guess I've ran out of things to say. <laughs> so I yield my time. <laughs> thank you, Pam. Mike, did you want <clears throat> to say anything? Thank you all for coming out. God bless you and good night. No elections to announce. <laughs> uh, well, lots of things. It was uh, uh, very nice to see some students here in whatever capacity. Um, and um, I hope that we see more of you come the next school year <laughs> because uh, uh, I've been very impressed by the individuals that have uh, come to us and come before us. And so uh, obviously I'm hoping that continues. We'll get some uh, things out of the way. Uh, housekeeping sort of things. On the Memorial Day uh, ceremony that's taking place that is going to be at noon, and Tony wanted me to advise that this year there will be no hot dogs at the American Legion as there normally were, and I think that's due to the COVID. Um, there was a mention about Wayne County. Um, rest assured that the city is communicating quite frequently and regularly with Wayne County on a number of things in, uh, regarding road closures, road construction, uh, homebound vaccination programs, um, and various and sundry things where um, the communication has not been coming our way. Um, uh, the Oakwood Boulevard closure is a perfect example where well, we discovered that road was completely closed only because our deputy fire chief happened to be up on the hill making an, an inspection. Um, kudos again to our fire department for the homebound program. 
Um, there was a flyer that came out that we innocently published on our social media only to find that none of the numbers listed were accurate and of course no one had been contacted. That was also addressed. Um, but again, thanks to the efforts of our fire chief and deputy fire chief and in working with other affected cities, uh, they developed a process very quickly so that our residents are going to be well taken care of as usual. Um, I wish that Charles had passed on that because I thought I had kind of settled down from that. <laughs> Apparently not. Um, I did want to mention that I had received an email from a doctor, um, Satish Ganaga, who is the medical director of the emergency department at Henry Ford Health Center, Brownstown. And uh, he is a uh, taken on the volunteer role of physical medical advisor for the Allen Park Fire Department and wanted to advise that um, the Henry Ford Health System is celebrating EMS week from May 16th to May 22nd. So um, for those who are so inclined, please give some extra acknowledgement to our EMS group. Again, um, I don't know where we'd be during this pandemic without you. Um, I wanted to get back to uh, the to Chase and the shot class and Mr. Gulasarian. Um, they do excellent work, and this is uh, again another uh, reason why we need to have education of uh, and all different levels and all from different perspectives. Um, I believe that Mr. Pruitt is uh, quite an entrepreneur, uh, from what I've discovered, and I also had uh, some wonderful things that um, we encountered with some of the other school departments um, through the Allen Park Citizen Civic Fund where the shot class actually built all of the mini libraries that you see in the city parks and the art department painted all of them. And that goes back two years ago. And so that may be new news to some of you, maybe old news to others, but I wanted to point out the value of a, a broad range of uh, educational courses. Um, other than that, we've got uh, lots of holidays in May. Uh, we've got uh, Eid al Fatir, which is the, uh, uh, observed on sundown on Wednesday, uh, which is ending the fasting for the Muslim community. Um, the Peace Officers Memorial Day uh, is being celebrated on Saturday, May 15th. Uh, and that is uh, the day where um, we remember all of the peace officers who have been killed or disabled in the line of duty. And then we have Armed Forces Day on May 15th. Um, and uh, encourage everyone to attend who can the Memorial Day service. Um, I know it's a, it's a great undertaking that's been done yearly by the American Legion and we very much appreciate that. I think I've covered everything. I probably will leave here and find another note scribbled on the back of something else and probably wasn't that important, but I do appreciate everyone who has attended tonight. It was it's very nice to see more faces, some new, some familiar. I encourage you to please keep coming. Um, get your information directly from us uh, and not through um, social media um, because um, there's a lot of inaccuracies there. So if you have a question, come to us and we will give you the answer or we will find out the answer. So with that, may I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. Motion by Mr. Lally. Second. Second by Mr. Lloyd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried 6.59 p.m. Thank you all very much.